Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right, so we're joined from the University of Southern Mississippi by the Metro Jackson Admissions Counselor for Madison County Schools. He is your man, Jacob Nelson, and we are recording this for our friends at Madison Central High School, Ridgeland High School, Germantown High School, the Academic Options Center, and also here at Velma Jackson. I've got some juniors with me. We're also being joined by Kiara Drain's class, and our seniors will be able to see this very soon. So we thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm a uh, 2004 graduate of Sutter Miss, and it was a great time for me, great experience. And uh, one thing I've been telling the young people here is that uh, one thing that I think gets missed and overlooked a lot is that Sutter Miss, without a doubt, is the most diverse undergraduate institution in the state of Mississippi, and it's not even close. There really is so many racial groups, so many international groups, so many skill sets to where if you're thinking maybe I, I, you know, I'm not into the sports and things, that's fine. There's so many opportunities, so many great majors and so many great uh, academics and social activities right there at the university. Absolutely. Um, on campus, there are our Hattiesburg campus, I want to specify. We have over 220 different uh, student organizations um, that students can be involved within, um, as well as we have our own uh, Office of Multicultural Inclusion, um, which has um, pride offices within it, um, uh, organizations for Hispanic Americans, Latinx, um, uh, African Americans. I mean, it is a very, very diverse student population. Um, I pursued a degree in criminal justice, which is a majority male field. Um, and my department was actually majority female. Um, I was actually the only mass male master's student in my program. So very diverse population. Um, and that just really brings campus to life. You get to experience lots of different viewpoints, which is very important uh, when you're pursuing an education, you don't want to be surrounded by people who all think just like you. Yeah, it was so. cool for me. When I was at Sutter Miss, that was the first time in my life I ever met somebody from Korea. It was the first oh, yeah. time in my life I ever, ever met somebody from Australia. So it was really cool to get to work with them and hearing their stories of how they came to America and what they were going to do when they went back to their country. So that was a lot of fun. The, um, the, uh, the president this year of the graduate school uh, student Council, which I got to be a part of, which is called the Graduate Council, um, is actually from Uganda. And yeah. he came to USM um, because he, when he was in Uganda, he decided he wanted to expand his knowledge to begin a new political party um, to actually create change within his own nation. And he is now president of the Graduate Student Senate, which is, I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> That was great. Um, now I don't know if you wanted to, if you wanted to show anything. Uh, you do have the ability to. Uh, um, yeah, I have a PowerPoint here that, um, if I can figure out how to show it, I've I've had to do Zoom meetings, but it has been quite a while. There it is. Okay, here we go. Um, boom. I think I think that did it. Is that working? I don't um, see it yet. Okay. Well, oops. Let's try this. All right, we're going to figure this out. Um, technical difficulties. Oh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> and, now, and, and another thing about uh, while we're transitioning, and I know you'll, you, you, this is probably in the PowerPoint, is that it is a big school, but it is very personable. The, I, I, I never, I only, I only remember one class that was exceptionally large. Um, so there is a, yes. a great personable uh, relationship with the professors and except for that one with a really big class, all of them knew me, which was really cool. Yes, so our um, student to faculty ratio is 18 to one um, for your, there we go. Now oh, I'm doing got something. I got it. How do we, okay, now I got this. Don't look at all my secrets for what's ahead. <laughs> so um, here we go. So our oh. student to faculty ratio um, being 18 to one, uh, really gives you the opportunity to, like you said, meet with your faculty member. Um, they have letters of recommendation um, to where the point of not only how you did academically, um, but they can actually go through and describe your personality, um, how well you work with others, uh, things like that, which is really beneficial. Um, 
as well as it gives you ample opportunity um, to work on undergraduate research, which is very important if you really want to go into a STEM field or you want to go into a social science or you want to pursue a uh, professional degree like a master's or a, or a PhD, uh, getting that hands-on learning experience is really a unique opportunity at Southern Miss. Uh, and that's because we have about 15,000 undergraduate students. Yeah. So it's a lot, but it's not all too much. Yeah. We, we want more. Um, and in doing so, we're expanding faculty and expanding our resources to be able to keep that hands-on learning experience alive and well. Um, yeah, it's really good. So this is the little PowerPoint that um, a presentation that we have uh, for our seniors and juniors who are interested in Southern Miss or just need more information. Um, there's a lot of information in it as well as some videos. I'm not sure how those will work out, um, but we'll see when we get there. Play it by ear. We'll play it by ear. All right, so here we go. I mean, you can't really see, they can see it very well, but it did show the uh, marine marine biology, which is the only marine biology program in the in the South. And I yeah. know that's on the coast on the on the coast campus. But if somebody's interested in marine biology, USM is the way to. I mean, it's the only way to go in the state of Mississippi if you wanted to get into that. Yes, and. Um... We are currently working on ways um, to have the, the marine biology be a two and one. Um, so uh, you do two years in Hattiesburg, so you don't get to miss out on that um, lovely college experience and then move down to our Gulf Coast Research Facility. Um, we would love for it to all be housed in Hattiesburg, but when you spend hundreds of millions um, in ocean research science and build a state-of-the-art facility on the Gulf Coast, you, you need to use it, especially because if you're going to be a marine biologist, you need to be where the marine life are. Um, and if that's something that students are interested in, we have tons of information out there on it, um, as well as if you're like, you know what, I just don't want to live on the coast. There are many ways to go about becoming a marine biologist through things like conservational biology, which we offer in Hattiesburg, um, as well as I can't talk about it, but we're building new degree plans uh, for marine biology and other um, aquatic sciences as well. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so to, to, be, uh, to, to be told later. Um, but this is Southern Miss by the numbers. I've already kind of gotten into it a little bit, um, and that number's gone up. So we were founded in 1910 um, as the Mississippi Normal College for Teachers, um, which is what we were focused on at the time, was teaching teachers how to teach. Um, and we got really good as it, at it, as we will come to get to here shortly. Uh, we have approximately 15,000 students. I know it says 14, but it's 15. Um, with over 140 different degree plans to choose from. Um, so that's majors. So, I mean, you have 140 of them. I actually have a booklet here that I can show you. All of those, oops, it went away. Let's see, all of those are all of our majors that we offer. We offer a lot. Um, so, yes. And we have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And campus isn't that large, which is really nice. That means your walk from your dorm to the dining hall is three, four minutes maximum. Yeah. Um, your walk across campus, like very rarely do you ever have to go from one end all the way to the other. And if you do, it's really only like a 15 minute. I mean, and that's a very slow stroll. Yeah walk it's really nice um which is one of the reasons why i like it so much because our office is three minute walk from starbucks which is very nice when you're needing some coffee um we had, do have some academic points of pride so we're one of the nation's leading research institutions um, because we have a r1 research designation 
There are 139 institutions in the United States with that designation, um, meaning we're automatically top 140. Um, of those 139, only 14 have D1 athletics programs. Wow. Of those with 14 D1 athletics programs, we are one of three to be accredited in all four major areas of arts. Wow. So music, dance, theater, as well as art, classically, like you would think of it as. Yeah. Um, and that is, you can get your PhDs in it. Um, very intense arts programs that we love to have and be able to really kind of announce and tell people about. Uh, we were named Mississippi's most affordable uh, university um, and highly ranked. So that's something that's really awesome as well. Um, as well as we're among less than 1% of universities worldwide to have AACSB accreditation in business and accounting. Wow. So that's international 1%, uh, and it's less than 1%. The uh, College of Business and Economic Development goes, you got to tell them we're in the top 0.043%. And I'm like, that's right. so we're in less than 1%. Um, so we are, we, we take it to the top, as we like to say. Um, our nursing program has a 100% post-graduation employment rate. Um, and we also produce the most nurses in the state compared to any other college institution. Um, yeah, that, and that new nursing school is uh, absolutely awesome building. Absolutely. And we're ranked 13th in our production of certified teachers. Wow. Um, to put it into a really cool perspective, 40% of all teachers in the state of Mississippi are Southern Miss graduates. And um, we are battling in the top 20 uh, for our teacher productions against schools that are sometimes two to four times our size wow. in student population. And we are top 20. Yeah, and we have three here on campus. So three here on campus, including myself, so. Yeah, see, see, there you go. I mean, we're, we're everywhere. Got to look out for us. <laughs> so our College of Arts and Sciences, it is our, oops, I like that picture. We're going to keep it for a second. We are, the College of Arts and Sciences is the largest college on campus. It hosts 90 majors. Um, it is, it is massive. So everything that you can think of as a hard science, so chemistry, biology related, it's all housed in there. Anything that you can think of as a social science, psychology, political science, sociology, all housed within, as well as all four major areas of art. So every degree for music, every degree for art, every degree for dance and theater are all housed within this one college. It is massive. Um, and one of the really cool things um, that I like to talk about that not everyone else knows um, is we have four emphasis areas in forensic science. So forensic anthropology, forensic biology, forensic criminal justice, and forensic chemistry. Wow. And we are one of five universities to offer that level of an education on the undergraduate level. Um, and we constantly are bringing in students for forensic science from internationally as well as uh, across the nation. Um, and that department is growing like crazy. Uh, they actually just started a security uh, minor that is now available through it as well. Um, and it's very large. It's, it's nice. Um, like I said earlier, we're one of 131 institutions nationwide with R1 doctoral university designation. Um, I know you're thinking about, you know, getting your bachelor's degree before ever thinking about getting your doctorate. Um, but going to a university that has that designation means that if you are going to produce undergraduate research, the name on the paper, that's not yours, meaning the faculty, um, your advisors, the university as a whole, it comes with some weight. Yeah. Um, and it really does. We brought in as a university, um, non-medical, so we don't have a medical school, 
Um, we brought in over $130 million in research grant um, during yeah, last year. So we we were we were cooking it. We were cooking some research and it's steadily growing. Um, we have five nationally accredited engineering programs, um, architectural engineering, computer engineering, ocean engineering, polymer and industrial ocean engineering. Uh, we are one of five institutions in the United States where you can get an ocean engineering degree. Wow. Uh, if you want to go somewhere else for ocean engineering, you are going to have to travel over a thousand miles. Wow. Um, and it is a top rated ocean engineering program. A lot of people don't know what they do. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know exactly what they do. Um, the best way it was described to me is they can build private islands. And I was like, I can talk about that for a second. So very intense engineering programs that are highly accredited um, and really interesting. And then from the College of Arts and Sciences, we get to the big boys of the College of Business and Economic Development. Um, there's top rated business school uh, by U.S. News and World Report. Um, there are 14 different majors with eight different minors and eight certificate programs, all within the College of Business and Economic Development. Um, so it's smaller major wise, but it is actually the largest college within the school for student um, student numbers. Uh, as I've already mentioned, among 1% of business schools with AACSB accreditation, um, tons of internship opportunities, as well as within the College of Business and Economic Development, there are eight study abroad programs specifically for the College of Business and Economic Development, one of which I wish I could have gone on is spending a month in Hawaii. Oh. If you want to go for restaurant and tourism, um, you got to go where restaurant and tourism is at its peak, and that, my friends, is Hawaii. Um, and it is awesome experience for the students um, come back with some great stories. Um, because the thing is, is you're in class until about noon and then the rest of the day is yours. That's what study abroad is. And you get to spend half your day for a month in Hawaii. It's just, ah, I'm jealous. Um, they have degrees for sports management. Um, they have degrees for uh, sports safety, um, uh, actual business, um, entrepreneurship, um, finance, accounting, uh, the list goes on. Uh, very good and very elite um, majors are housed. Yeah, with the internship with Horn, my cousin got her accounting degree at Southern Miss and got the internship with Horn, and now she's a partner with Horn. So yeah. the opportunity to move up, and that's one of the largest business firms in the country. Um, it is. Able, able to start that at Southern Miss. Yeah, and the, the coolest thing about it, in my opinion, is the the room that these two gentlemen are sitting in at the moment um, is a live stock trading room. Wow. Um, so our students that go into trade and economics as well as finance have the opportunity to sit down and through a program trade fake stocks um, live and see how the market interacts. Um, it was a program developed at USM and is only housed at USM. Um, and it, that's another example of getting hands-on experience with trade, because if you're going to start, you know, playing around with millions of dollars, it's best to play around with it while it's fake. Um, that way you're not hurting somebody along the way. Um, as well as there's a bell that rings when the New York Stock Exchange opens, as well as when uh, the Asian markets and others open it's really cool. And right next door is an institution that we really like to talk about called the Hatchery. Um, it's available to all students on campus. You don't have, just have to be a College of Business and Economic Development student. Um, and it is a place on campus where students can come in with business ideas and pitch them. Um, if you have a design and you'd want to see what it would look like on an actual piece of fabric, you can do that. If you have a model in mind and you want to see what it would look like 3D printed, you can do that. Um, as well as it's open, I want to say almost 24-7, almost. Um, uh, and it has a coffee bar and all sorts of other things housed within it that's just free to access. 
Um, and sometimes, um, like with their internships listed down there, um, there, sometimes those people just come up in and sit into the hatchery and listen to what some students have to say. Um, and we've had students actually make deals um, wow. with businesses based off their business ideas in the hatchery. It's really cool. It's a really fun place to sit. I, I enjoy just sometimes going in there and hanging out. Um, the College of Business and Economic Development has large funding as well, um, with meaning like black granite walls. It is a very opulent building. Uh, it's very high tech uh, and very cool to be in. So if business is something you're looking to get involved in, we're the place in the state to go for it. So our College of Nursing and Health Professions is, for lack of a better word, intense. Um, the College of Nursing specifically um, produces the most nursing graduates in the state. Um, all the clinical work is done in Hattiesburg. So once you commit to, you know, joining a sorority or fraternity or being a president of an organization, we're not going to make you leave. You can stay in Hattiesburg. The longest drive, I believe, is 20 minutes, maybe, north to Collins to work in the VA hospital or the VA nursing home, I'm sorry, um, to get some work done up there. Um, but really, that's just for very few people, um, majority of which just stay about 10 minutes away from campus. Um, and that's a very unique opportunity in the state that's not offered at other places. Um, like two big hospitals right there by campus that are always, you know, always having clinical work. Always having clinical work. Um, and it's really good. It's a really good nursing program. They spent about $15 million um, in this floor or this picture that's taken and this room and that entire floor. It is a simulation lab. Wow. So there's dummies on each bed. You can see here that they've got gas going through into this one. When you pump liquid into the dummy, the liquid then has to come out. Um, they're fully functioning dummies. Um, I really don't even want to call them dummies because they're part animatronic as well, meaning that they can cry, they can talk to you, um, they can bleed. It's really intense um, because you need that hands-on learning environment before you ever touch someone else. Um, and so being able to put you in the room like this, which is a surgical room or in labor and delivery or in a NIC ICU or just simulating the emergency room is very important um, and really expands your abilities uh, once you hit the ground running in clinicals. We have three on-campus speech pathology and audiology observation clinics, one of which is the DuBard School. Um, the DuBard School is a fully functioning K through sixth grade elementary school, um, and it is for students that have speech impediments, um, as well as for students who have hearing disabilities. And the work they do there is absolutely astonishing. Uh, it's beautiful work. And undergraduate and graduate students both get the hands-on learning experience. Um, helping young children be able to either, you know, come out of a speech impediment or to help them figure out how to um, speak properly, as some students may need, um, as well as helping um, children with hearing disabilities learn ASL um, and giving treatments and things like that. Um, it has international funding, um, so, not, so not just state funding. Um, they get grants from everywhere. Uh, it is a really, really good program. Yeah, and with the advances in technology, that's a really fast-growing field. I've had a couple of friends that went through that, and they're making some good money. Yes, and um, we are one of those institutions that are trying to publish and make the uh, advances in technology. Um, they do some really cool things in speech pathology and audiology, um, as well as just having the observation clinics. Um, because you can have a really good program at a school, but not have the ability to get hands-on experience in it. And it, it's it doesn't it doesn't do as much for someone going through the program. And so being able to have those clinics is amazing. Um our so this one gets confusing for people. The College of Education and Human Sciences. Um it's different than the College of Nursing and Health Professionals. So 
Um, like I said, we're 12th in the nation to produce board certified teachers. Um, we are nationally accredited in all areas of psychology. There were 30 different research labs. Um, my favorite statistic about the, the university though is that last one right there at the bottom. 25% of all registered kinesiologists in the United States are graduates of USM. Yeah, and USM has a great partnership with UMC for those who want to become the physical therapist. That yes. pre-physical therapy program at Southern Miss is world class. Yes, it is. Um, it, 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 it really is. Uh, the kinesiology program is actually the program on campus where our um, cadaver lab is held. Um, they are... Uh, the kinesiology department partnered with the polymer science department um, have made leaps and bounds in football research, uh, specifically for helmets. Um, you get to see a lot of cool uh, universities, you know, put up the image of like smashing a football helmet with like sledgehammers and doing all kinds of stuff to it. Well, that's because it's peer reviewed research that was produced originally at USM. And that is an amazing thing that we get to say. Um, we made all of their commercials better, um, as well as currently they are working on um, fixing the sole of shoes for basketball players to reduce uh, knee and ankle impact injuries, uh, which is really cool. On the, I believe it's the second floor of the building. I might be lying to y'all on this one. I'm sorry. The second floor of the building, there's like a $25 million room um, that has just sensors throughout the floor where they work with our um, athletes um, and weight training, uh, as well as doing jump tests and things like that for impact. It's, I didn't want to walk in there because I get nervous when people start throwing out dollar signs, but they do an amazing research uh, housed within that room, uh, like sensor plates all along the floor. It's way above my head for understanding. But if you're interested in it, we're the place for you. Um, as well as this, um, this college houses things like dietitians and um, nutrition, um, which have labs that are 100% just kitchens. Um, and so individual cooking stations, I believe the largest one has 15 um, different kitchens within one room in itself. So fully stocked, you've got sinks, you've got stoves, you've got ovens, microwaves, everything. Um, and that, again, is an impact of that hands-on learning experience. If you're going to teach someone that, hey, you need to eat this way, not only do you need to know the science behind why they need to eat that way, but you need to be able to explain how to prepare the food as well. And so one of my favorite days on campus is when they do cookie day. And I'm so upset I'm going to miss it this year um, because they wound up making thousands of chocolate chip cookies, thousands of sugar cookies. And it's just whoever wants them can come upstairs and get them. The only trick to it is, is you have to pass the cadaver lab to get there. And so a lot of people will make the journey and then go, nah, I can't, no, uh, not me. I'm, I'm, I'm in it for some cookies. Uh, and they are really good too. So Cookie day is something to look forward to if you choose USM. So we have lots of traditions and um, I'm sure you have many of your own stories about traditions at USM. We've brought some back from the past, we've put some away, um, but they exist in some form or variety for everyone still. Uh, you can see here people getting all grossed up, covered in paint. Um, that is actually Eagle Walk. Uh, which is a tradition that started in 1977, once our stadium, The Rock, was completed. Uh, it's a road that you can drive on on campus that goes underneath the visitor section or the student section as well of the football stadium. And we allow or let students paint the road gold as well as put their handprint on the wall. Um, and it's a one, both a necessity because the road needs to be painted. Um, two, it gives you a memory of like being able to paint the road. And then three, it allows you to put an actual physical mark on campus. Um, so did you do Eagle Walk at USM? It had not started yet when I was there. I saw old I am. Oh, man. Okay. So Our alumni, we have several alumni that are there and they've done it and shared it on Instagram. and They had a great time. Okay. Well, you should come down next year when we do it. It's awesome. I got to do it. It was, it was great. So you can see the handprints on the wall. 
beside them. And then there's another one here and a few, page, few slides down that'll show it. Um, but they don't remove those. They don't spray paint over it or sandblast it. They leave it. Um, and that's so you actually are able to leave your physical mark on campus. There's always something that ties you there to your experience. Um, and it, it gets kind of emotional for people at graduation. They'll go back um, to Eagle Walk where they stood years ago and put their hand back on their own handprint, um, take graduation photos. It's it's awesome. Uh, just to the left of the video, you can actually see Eagle Walk in its prime, which is on game day. Um, and I have a video of that that's going to play here in a little bit. Uh, uh, the band, the cheerleaders, the Dixie Darlings, the football team, uh, the president, the ROTC, every, anybody and everybody that wants to march down Eagle Walk gets to march down Eagle Walk, and it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's my favorite part about game day for a game day tradition is just Eagle Walk. It's it's you fit everybody into a small location, and it gets just real, real rowdy. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. I like it. Um, as well as we have other things like the Little Rock, which you can see Happy Founders Day. Um, and then our ring ceremonies, uh, homecoming week traditions, such as the fountain sit, which good luck to those who choose to do that, because I could never do it. Um, I can't sit in a fountain in cold weather and just answer trivia. That's not, I'm not built for that. Um, as well as we've started new traditions, like in the top right corner, um, before the first home game of the season, uh, we've created a new tradition last year that was called Screaming Eagles where all new incoming freshmen and transfer students get to come onto campus or onto campus, get to actually run out onto the football field oh, cool. with the band playing for them. I mean, the lights are going, they do the smoke machines and the, oh, and the fire and they shoot it up. It's, it's awesome. As well as the public of Hattiesburg is invited. So you actually wind up having people in the stands cheering you on for your first, it's really cool. Uh, I've loved being at it this year. Um, it is an awesome experience that people get to live through. I wish we could have had it for when I did it because oh, yeah. that that is awesome. I mean, they, and they stage you in the athletic center right there next to the football stadium. So you run out of the locker rooms just like they do on game day. It is, it is awesome. Um, as well as, I mean, I could go on and on about traditions. There's, there's a lot of, them. yeah. Uh, yeah. Think video. Hmm. Yeah, we can't really hear, but we see it. But yeah, the, the Eagle Walk is really something to see. Yeah, we actually just watched this one. yeah we can't really hear it but we, yeah, we definitely saw it that's a yeah that's a great uh yeah always something going on we yeah we actually just watched that okay <laughs> yeah there's there's always something going on on campus um like i said earlier over 220 different student organizations study abroad opportunities in 20 different countries that's not including the eight that the College of Business and Economic Development do, as well as tons of traditions at USM. Um, like this picture right here is taken in um, Town Square Park in downtown Hattiesburg. Um, last Friday was the first for the fall where they do um, live at five. They bring in bands um, every Friday at five and everybody hangs out in the park, listens to the band, there's food trucks, all kinds of stuff going on just in Hattiesburg in general. Um, and what's really nice about it is the location of Hattiesburg. So for those of you in North Madison County, I'm sorry, it's a little bit further than an hour and a half, but we like to say it's an hour and a half from Jackson, it's an hour and a half from the coast, and it's an hour and a half from New Orleans. Yeah. So you were centrally involved to go anywhere that you want to, as well as home. Those of you up north, it would take, you know, may, maybe two hours, depending on how far out in the county you live. But yeah, so there's a tons of things that you can do. Um, 
for student organizations. I mean, they'll let anybody join a student organization um, if you're interested in a topic. And if you feel like there's not a student organization for you, make it. Yeah. We highly recommend it. That's how we have 200 plus of them. Um, I had the odd experience of being both the um, executive director of college Republicans and college Democrats at the same time. Wow. At the same time in 2016. That's pretty cool. In the election year. Ooh. So it's, you can do anything at the university. It is, it is awesome. Um, very, very diverse opportunities for you to choose from. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, sparked a lot of fun conversations, executive director of both of those. Um, so we're getting into kind of the meat of things, what people want to hear about. So our Golden Opportunities application houses over 900 scholarships. And like I said, we got 15,000 students. Some of those scholarships are multi-million dollar scholarships. So multiple people wind up getting them. Um, it's all housed on one singular um, application for scholarships uh, called the Golden Opportunities application. Uh, you put in as much information about yourself onto that application as you can, because it then goes through the system and starts to pull the other scholarships that you can fit that best fit you. Um, and then if they have extra requirements for those individual scholarships, you go back to the golden opportunities to fill those out. That includes Lucky Day, Honors College, and McCarty Scholars. So tons of opportunities are housed in there. Um, and it is open today. It opened on September 1st. So if you've been admitted to the university, start applying for scholarships because they, they, they don't last long. Um, and it's best to get them under the way as soon as you can. And then student life. So student life on campus is a lot of fun. You have from uh, your different student organizations, from being able to go to D1 athletics, like this uh, slide shows, um, from being in fraternity or sorority life, uh, tons of opportunities for you to do on campus, as well as just recreation. Um, so you can drive 45 minutes and go hike Mississippi's Grand Canyon at Red Bluff. Um, you can go to our pain center, which is our gym um, that is free membership for all students. Um, you can climb the rock wall there. You can go run down the uh, trace, not the Natchez trace, but you can go run down the long leaf trace, which is a decommissioned railroad. Um, that's good and paved. It's very well lit and it goes for like 40 miles. It goes to Prince. Yeah, so so you can you can bike it, you can skate it, you can crawl it if you want to. You run, walk, do whatever you want. I love to go out there and walk in the fall. It's beautiful, um, and it runs right through Hattiesburg all the way out. It's really cool. Um, there's like I said, there's tons of stuff to do on campus as well as eating. Now that's a topic I really like to talk about because that's what gets people's attention is what kind of food do you do you offer. Well, aside from our dining hall, we have a Chick-fil-A, a Subway. We are building a Moe's. Wow. Yeah. So we're going to have a Moe's on campus. We have an Einstein bagels, yep. which amazing in the morning. We have Bento, which is a sushi slash Bento restaurant. We have Southern Wings and Things which are which is like a like hot wings restaurant on campus we have starbucks we have an equinox coffee which is just another coffee place we have a food truck that drives around really good i can't describe what all comes on the food truck it changes daily um but things like grilled cheeses that sort of thing get your mind into that direction as well as we just opened an acai bowl food truck wow. um so very expanding what's just available on campus. And that's not even counting what you can walk across the street and get. Exactly. Across the street, you have the Midtown or Pyro's Pizza. You have Fuzzy's Tacos. You've got... Glory I mean, Bound Euro, one of my favorites. Glory Bound Euro. You've got Fat Boys Pizza. You've got Mexican restaurants, Asian restaurants. I mean, you've got 
Hattiesburg is nice. It's yeah. got a lot of and although you can literally walk across the street, they're very easy to access. Oh yeah, a really good pho place is just right off campus across the road. That's a good one too. Asian Cafe, highly recommended if you come to Hattiesburg. It's got some real oh, love some noodles. It's really good. Um, and then our dining hall itself has pizza every day, so fresh pizza, a Euro bar. So we just talked about a Euro place, but we got a Euro bar on campus, a salad bar, a deli section, as well as hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken strips, french fries, that sort of thing every day. Um, a custom noodle bar. So you can have custom Alfredo, custom red sauce noodles, um, a Mongolian grill, as well as a nacho bar um, and a 24-7 self-serve waffle section which is really nice <laughs> which is really nice um as well as a rotating cafeteria style menu um daily but i can go ahead and tell you this on wednesdays you're gonna have fried chicken and on fridays you're gonna have fried fish and you're wanna gonna get you're gonna want to get there early for both because that line gets long because it's both really good um specifically that fried chicken it is it is top tier um, so here's a small little video about some game day traditions and what that kind of looks like on campus. Um, so you can see here they're walking through campus. Uh, that's the Memorial Rose Garden in front of them or behind them. And then they're going to come through Eagle Walk yeah, right on time, right here. Um, Eagle Walk, my, one of my favorite traditions. Uh, it's awesome. Um, Dixie Darlings football team. You can see right there next to the stadium, Seymour. It's just an awesome experience. As well as there's um, just the Pride Band itself is a very large, very good organization. Um, very few people have anything negative to say about the Pride Band ever. They're just really good. Um, they actually even have their own practice turf field on campus. And the fall is the best time to be on campus in the afternoon because you get to walk and then it's like, it really feels like you're in a college movie at times because you're just hearing those collegiate tunes going and you're like, why, why am I hearing our fight song right now? And then you'll like look on the third floor and you're like, oh, there's the band. <laughs> so it's it's awesome. Um, and I have briefly mentioned it, um, but we also have um, a large fraternity and sorority life on campus. So we have the Divine Nine, your... Um, uh, you're also known as your National Panhellenic Council. Um, you have your Council of Hellenic Sororities. And then I don't remember the council name for the fraternities, but it, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. Um, roughly 20% of all students on campus are involved Ooh. in some fraternal or sorority organization. Um, and yeah, they, they have a lot of fun. They do a lot of really good work uh, within the city of Hattiesburg itself um, for like uh, not volunteer work. Um, community service. Communities, thank you. Community service work uh, within the city of Hattiesburg, um, such as um, a few years ago, they actually went to rebuild and help maintain, a lot of the fraternities did at least, to help rebuild and maintain some baseball parks within the city. Um, they did a lot of donations and fundraisers. Um, they've been raising money for Jackson's water crisis, all kinds of things. So really good organizations. Um, I have friends who they have helped them not only in school with friends and family, but also in their careers after graduation. So really good organizations. I was not a part of one, but they're very good organizations, if that's something you're looking into. Um, as well as here's some more about campus life. So some study abroad opportunities are pictured here. There's our rock wall. Um, there's our grub slinger food truck, as well as puppy day at the Honors College, which is like, like my second favorite day on campus. Um, we also house um, concerts in Spirit Park, as well as within our uh, Reed Green Coliseum. There's over 300 um, art shows per year. So like musical theater, standard theater, operas, um, uh, 
ensembles, all sorts of different shows that you can go to. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. They're going to do the Adams Family here in a couple of weeks. So I actually have my tickets for that one. I'm excited. Um, as well as every um, game day, so not just randomly, but every game day, there's also a concert in Spirit Park during tailgate. Yeah, which I, yeah that's what I tell them. You know, even if you're not a big football fan, you know, there's still a lot to do on those. There's a lot of music and a lot of food out there for everybody to enjoy. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, nobody's going to be upset if you ever just walk up and take a bite of food because – that's what it's there for. We're, we like to we like to portray that golden eagle family, and that's that's what we really are. Um, like I had a, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, I had a huge tray of cookies um, in my tailgate tent, and I kept catching out of the corner of my eye. This little boy would come over about every three or four minutes and take another cookie and run back to his tent. And his mom caught him about the sixth time he did it. And she was like, go apologize. And I was like, yeah, many of these cookies as you want. Um, and most people are that way, as well as having a lot of um, intramural sports, like a lot. We don't have a swim team, but we do have an intramural master swim club, um, as well as you can see flag football, baseball, wiffle ball, Quidditch, like yeah, and I was very involved in intramurals. I actually got a, a graduate assistant scholarship to LSU through intramurals. So there's See? a lot of opportunities through that, um, through rec sports. And, uh, you know, it can it can lead you getting a master's degree, even if you want to stay in, uh, in rec sports or not. There are it's a lot of student employment opportunities and a lot of scholarship opportunities. Yeah, there are. And if you um, are, like, interested in becoming, like, a referee, like, if that's something, like, that you want to do, the university um, needs referees for intramurals. Um, and they can get you certified in your sport as a referee. And then you can use it not only to get paid on campus, but locally. And then people don't realize that your local person at your baseball park is the same person, is on the same career track as the person in an MLB park was. Um, yeah. It just depends on how good you get at it. Um, and it's the same career track. So if that's something you look like you're interested in, you never know. Doors can open for you that way, too. Um, the bottom one though, the bottom one shows our pool on campus and some ladies doing paddleboard yoga. Um, I don't know how they do that. I'm not gonna lie. We can't figure it out. Balance, I guess is really good because I could just see myself swimming the entire time because there ain't no way I could stay on that board. Um, but there's a lot of different classes like kickboxing and other things that are offered completely for free on campus. Just being a part of, um, the pain center you get into it so it's really cool opportunities um i think i've talked about everything on here oh top left um is both a community outreach um food pantry as well as a food pantry for our students because we recognize not everybody comes from you know able homes um and it's not just like if when you're living on campus it's for when you if you move off campus as well because um, college is expensive, and we recognize that times are hard for many people. So the, our food pantry is open to the public as well as to our student population. Um, and it's no judgment. Walk in, take what you need, and we're good to go. Um, I, it was really fun being a part of that, uh, the building of that on campus. Um, and I don't have a picture of it because we just opened it, but we also just opened escape rooms on campus as well. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I need to go through it. I haven't done it yet, but they did just open those. So lots of fun things to do on and off campus. Um, one thing that I will highly recommend for everyone, um, even if you're like, eh, I just don't feel like Southern Miss is my thing. That's okay. I want Southern Miss to be your thing. Trust me. Um, I highly recommend coming for a, a campus visit, um, but I highly recommend visiting any college that you're going to choose. Um, a lot of other recruiters like myself aren't going to tell you to do that, because um, if you're going to devote four years minimum to an institution, you you better like it like and you better like the people that are there. And the only way you're going to know if you do is by actually going on campus and seeing it and not during the summer and not during Christmas break. You got to see it when it's alive. You got to see it when the students are there. Um, we offer information sessions and academic sessions every day of the week. Um, I highly recommend coming through. 
um, an information session. It's like, I don't really know what I want to do, or I know exactly what I want to do. And I've already made up my mind, but I just want a little bit more information about this university specifically. Um, you'll get kind of a similar talk that I, we, I, we've been having right now, um, as well as get to take a residence hall tour, as well as a campus tour. And then an academic session is if you're like, I know what I want to do, but I want to make sure this is the place for me. Um, so say you want to do, you, you're you really wanting to go into conservation biology um, and you sign up for an academic session and you want to hear from honors college as well as maybe someone from fraternity and student life or fraternity and sorority life. When you sign up for your academic session, we will reach out to those departments and get you access to them. So when you come on campus, you'll get a similar talk like this, but it's just you and a recruiter and your family. And then you'll get an individual campus tour. And then you'll stop off at conservational biology, just sticking with the example. And you'll sit down with one of the professors and they'll give you academic and career advice for like, are you sure this is what you wanna do? Are you sure that like, is like, they're going to break it down for you all the way the best of their abilities. Um, you can meet with Honors College individually, Fraternity and Sorority Life. You can meet with eSports. You can meet with anyone um, and just get as much information about the university for your individual self. And then we're going to come up. I think this next slide is how to apply. So we do have a $45 application fee. It's online. Um, we need high school transcripts and ACT scores. When you apply, do not think that we need your final transcript. No, no, no. We need a transcript now. And your school is able to send those out. Um, some may have like an application that you have to fill out for your high school where they can then, you know, request a transcript to be sent and then they'll send one. Others, you can just ask your counselor to send your transcript. Yeah. Um, and if you if your school uses an application, uh, you know, another application to request a transcript to be sent, that's how you would find out about it anyway. So just go out and ask your counselors or your um, uh, is it college or career readiness teachers, you know, like, hey, I need some information sent and then they can help you get that sent. Um, there is a forty five dollar application fee. Um, best way I can say it is our graduate assistant, Nick, really appreciates his stipend. Um, there are ways to getting the application fee waived. Um, and that is one, you or your parent were a member of active duty military. Um, if that is what, if that is so, um, make sure to indicate that on your application and there will not be a fee applied. Um, if you receive an ACT test waiver, you can have your application fee waived. Or if you don't know about the ACT waiver, if your school just provides everyone with the ACT, um, if you receive a free or reduced lunch, that is another way of getting your application fee waived. Um, and if you don't know if you do, ask your counselor. They, they have that information and can tell you. Um, and it's real simple to get to the application. You go to usm.edu forward slash apply. We're trying to make it easy for everybody to be able to find. Um, and it only takes like 15 minutes max. Yeah. Um, you can do it on your phone. You can do it on your laptop. You can do it on an iPad. As long as you have internet, good. Yeah, and, it's just, internet. and it's just important to go ahead and get your name in now because that will, yeah. uh, you know, because you need to get in now to start applying for scholarships and to apply for housing because I know budget does fill up quick. Yes, yes. And we were just about to get to that. So scholarships. We give out scholarships starting at a 21 on the ACT. Um, these are strictly, you're not applying for these scholarships. Once you've applied to the university and been admitted, these are automatically applied to you if they fit for you. Um, so we give $3,000 for a 21 to a 23, 5,000 for a 24 to a 25, 6,000 for a 26 to a 27, 7,000 for a 28 to a 29, and then full value of tuition from a 30 to a 32 for four years. And then from a 33 to a 36, we'll pay your full value of tuition plus your freshman year of housing. Um, 
and you can compare that with other universities. We try to stay very competitive with it. We actually, congratulations to all of you seniors, if you apply to the university, we raised all of these scholarships by $1,000 for this year. Yeah, and all the juniors are taking the ACT October 18th. There you go. It's important to look at that. That's that's kind of the goals to start getting geared towards. Um, and then also very important information that everyone needs to know, regardless where you apply. Um, FAFSA and state aid both open October 1st. State aid is pretty simple. You need your you need driver's license, you and your parents, your social security numbers, and some other information about yourselves. FAFSA, it's going to take a Saturday. <laughs> FAFSA takes a while. Um, so it's worth it. I mean, you'd be shot when you can qualify for it. Yes. Um, and if you don't apply for either, you're wasting your tax money on both ends. Yeah. Um, even if you're like, I know I'm not going to get anything. If you never applied, you never know. Um, you have to apply for FAFSA before any financial aid can be distributed. We have to have your FAFSA. That is federal regulations. That is at every public institution in the United States. You have to have your FAFSA. As well as that is a checking point, guys. If you've avoided signing up for the selective service, not at FAFSA. Um, that's where they're going to catch you. So <laughs> I'd say it that way, <laughs> but, but that's, that's why FAFSA is regulated the way it is, as well as it houses for your student loans, different grants like Pell grants, help grants, um, and more. No, you're fine. I was just, I was telling the students something. Ah, okay. And then important dates specifically for USM. So our application opened August 1st, so we're past that. Application is still open. Um, the GO system, our, um, app, our scholarship system, opened on September 1st. October 1st is when housing applications open, as well as FAFSA and the state aid that we just talked about. For housing, this is why you want to be in, like, in October, okay? The sooner you apply for your housing application, the better options are available to you. So you can go, me and John Smith are going to room together at Southern Miss. So you put that in your housing application and then you go, oh, well, we really like Century Park North. And you can put that in and you go, but we really like building two at Century Park North. And you can put that in, you're like, but I want the corner room. And then you can select a corner room. So like you can pick all the way through but not after the February 15th housing deadline. So you've got from October to midway through February to get it in. And the sooner you get it in, the better. So for important deadlines, if you are going to apply for Honors College, for Lucky Day, for McCarty Scholars, or for, I feel like I'm missing another one. Nope, that's it. Those deadlines are December 1st. You have to have been admitted to the university prior to December 1st. I'm gonna say it again. If you wanna get into Honors College, Lucky Day or McCarty Scholars, you have to have been admitted to the university prior to December 1st. That'll be the McNair Scholars as well because uh, the former McNair Scholars said is a Belma Jackson alum. Okay. McNair Scholars as well. Yeah. So thank you. That's the one I was forgetting. So you you have to have to be in before December 1. And that's not, oh, it's December 1. It's time for me to get no. Before December 1. Because those scholarships are very highly competitive. They're gonna have essay writings that you're gonna need to do or presentations. And those end in January. So yeah. FAFSA priority deadline is December 15th. So FAFSA doesn't close on December 15th, but the federal government goes everybody between October 1 and December 15th is a priority. They've all applied. There's millions of them. And we're going to designate all of our funds to these people. Everyone after gets what they get. Yep. That's how it works. Um, it's very, <laughs> The government made it competitive. So get in before December 15th. Uh, fill out FAFSA before December 15th. On January 15th, 
those competitive scholarship applications are going to be closed. That's when those essays are due. Those presentations have to have been done January 15. Now, you might not hear back from them for a few months, um, but the Honors College does what's called blind grading. So your application, once received, um, and all of your essays is then your name is stripped from it and you're given a number. All identifying materials are removed um, and like your pronouns that you may put in there, um, where you're from might not be, might be, depends. Um, it's all removed. Um, so some of our presidential scholars in the past have had the bare minimum ACT score to get into the Honors College. And our presidential scholars have four years full tuition, full housing. Wow. Um, and that's done because it's based off the merit of your writing. Um, so something, you know, keep your eye out for. On March 1st, that is when the general scholarship consideration closes. So those ACT GPA scholarships that I talked about that we just give out, that ends March 1st. So you have to be admitted prior to March 1st to get those. That's actually kind of late. I mean, I, that's later than most colleges. So that's, that's yeah. more than enough time. Congratulations, seniors, again. It used to be December 1. Yeah. We pushed it back. Um, that gives you through the, we will accept the February ACT. Okay. Um, highly recommend taking it the January one. Um, hot, don't just wait till February to take it. If you know, like, hey, I'm one to two points away, go ahead and sign up for those other ACTs and try to get them under wraps. Um, because, yeah. Oh, we also do take super scores. So that's very important information that I forgot to mention a minute ago. We do take super scores. Um, to submit super scores and ACTs, you can go onto a laptop. Don't do it on your phone. Go onto a laptop. Pull up your My ACT account, click the top right corner where it says like your name and have that drop down menu show up. That way it says your full first and last name and just take a screenshot of your scores and send them to me. You don't have to pay to send them to us. You paid to take the test. We ain't going to make you pay to send your scores. That's too much. Um, and then May 1st is the deadline to accept scholarships and sign up for orientation. So in May is when it really gets real. Um, because you're two months out from move in. So I highly recommend signing up for an early orientation because if you get put in the last orientation, your move in day as well as orientation day are the same one. So you don't get to move in early in the morning. You have to go to orientation. And by the time orientation is over, all those nice volunteers that came out early that morning to help all the new freshmen move into the dorm, they're gone. So it's just y'all. So I highly recommend signing up for early orientation and there's spots for like thousands of people at one orientation. So you, you can get in. We, we never maxed out an orientation. So you can get into an orientation early. Um, if you've liked what you've seen, what you've seen, I highly recommend applying today and following us on social media to get updated information. Um, I am going to skip this video. So fun way, you can actually scan this QR code and it will take you directly to the application. Um, it took way too much to actually make this QR code. It's, it's a nightmare, but it does work. Um, this QR code will take you to the application as well as if you have any questions. I don't know what that beeping sound is. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. Um, the 543, 601 number, that is my cell phone. It's on me, uh, it's like all y'all at almost all times. If you have any questions, feel free to call, text me. That's me, it's not automated. It's gonna be me who responds. Um, the 266 number is my office phone. Um, I'm not really ever in the office, um, just being honest. So if you call that one, probably not gonna be there. Um, I get to the office about four o'clock on Fridays and I go home uh, and then I leave on Sundays to come back up to start recruiting again. So I'm not really there that often, but I do check it when I am there, um, as well as my email is listed on here. 
and you can follow me on Instagram. And if you have a question while you're scrolling Instagram, you can shoot me a DM. I'll answer that there. Um, or if you just really feel like tweeting at me, that also works as well. Um, I try to be available through every media that I can. I'm not starting a Facebook for y'all. I'm sorry. That's a whole process. That's a whole process now to start a Facebook. It used to just be log in and prove yourself, but I had it for about 20 minutes and it tried to delete my private Facebook page. And I was like, uh -uh, no, we can have the fun Instagrams. No one's on Facebook now anyway. So, but yeah, feel free. However you want to contact me, I'm here for you. All right. Well, that's awesome. Uh, and we're almost out of time and great information. We thank you for joining us. Um, but uh, before we go, um, I think it's important to remember the importance of those the ACT. And, you know, these kids are so sick of reviewing for it, you know, you know but uh, we saw the difference it can make in a scholarship with thousands of dollars just for one or two points different. So uh, just really want to stress the importance of the ACT. Yeah, and if you've already taken it, you know, I think they start doing super scores now at two. So if you've already taken the ACT twice and you don't know what your super score is, log into your MyACT account because I have seen super scores jump up because people will individually study for singular subjects on the ACT and they'll score high in some and low in others. So their composites will be like a 20, but then their super score is sitting somewhere around 25, 26 because they take the highest of each category and make that make that score. So I highly recommend looking what your super score is because and sending it in because they could put you in a whole different scholarship bracket in itself. Absolutely. Well, Jacob Nelson, for everybody in Madison County Schools, this is your man here at, at, at Southern Miss. And we, again, thank you so much for joining us. And as always, Southern Miss. To, to the top. top. Thank you all. Right. all. Appreciate it.